So hello there and welcome to a new tutorial video. In this video I would like to show you a um, motion graphic animation made within Cinema 4D and the final thing will be done in After Effects. And I saw something very cool on Behance from Mark Pearson and it was basically a flat motion graphic design and I was just wondering how he did it. And well basically just figuring out something in Cinema 4D and I got it done. So I would like to show you guys how to create something similar and I would like to show you the video first from Mark Pearson and it's just uh, the first beginning animation with these dots um, I have tried to create something similar but my animation is a lot faster so let's take a look so as you saw it's just a flat design animation it could be done in After Effects but that will take a shitload of time and what I did in Cinema 4D and let's get right into it. So first of all just start Cinema 4D and just create a sphere and just make the size very small, something like this. Make sure you, the display is on ground chain line so you, you can see the lines from the sphere itself. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a color, um, I'm going to pick a I'm going to Cooler from Adobe and there I'm going to choose a very cool color scheme for my um, project. Uh, I'm using Flat UI, that's this one I really like and I'm just going to use those specific colors for my spheres and first of all I'm going to pick the, the red one, just copying the RGB um, I'm copying those numbers and I'm going to create a material and make sure you click on RGB as well and now you can just copy and paste the values oops that's my idea <sighs> you can copy you can copy and paste the values so just copy it go to your cinema file and just paste it into your material and that way well, you can just pick the colors but I saw I did something wrong you make sure to hide everything and we are going to paste the luminance only so make sure to deselect the color and only select luminance and just give the luminance itself the values so let's do it again and there we go 76 and 60. So now I've just got a luminance flat color for my material and I'm going to do exactly the same with another material and I will give that one a blue color. So do exactly the same, just change the values for your color or maybe you, you don't use any cooler schemes and you just have your own colors, that's okay as well. But I, I'm always using colors from cooler. So I know the colors are matched for each other's, so it looks great for your animation. So let's select the values and then we can get into our animation. Alright, so now I'm done and I'm going to go to MoGraph and I'm going to create a cloner. And I'm going to drag the sphere into the cloner and as you can see it's just cloning my sphere right now but make sure you set mode to grid and we have to turn off the count amount make sure you have got count on one and we will give this sphere the red color so there we go that's our first uh, first yeah first grid so we have to create two more uh, simply by duplicating my cloner and make sure to set the coordinates Let's take a look at the coordinates. The position to 100 centimeters and just duplicate that one as well and set it to minus 100. So you, you can see we just got a square, square right now. And I'm going to give that other space another color as well. So you can see any difference. So, oops, not on the cloner. Make sure that you drag it onto the sphere. And if I'm going to make a quick render, you can see it's just a flat color design, so now we can animate it and render it as an alpha, so we can 
animated in After Effects as well. I'm not, not animating, but doing the last stuff in After Effects. So. Alright, um, to get a camera exactly to the front of your of your uh, objects. So it, as you can see now, you can see three spheres at the top and at the bottom. It, it's not perfectly centered and if I'm going to animate it right now, it does, just doesn't look good. So first thing I'm going to do is um, make sure I'm going to my right view and I'm going to create a camera. So make sure to click a few times on this square uh, uh, next to the camera. And if I'm going outside my camera view and I'm going into perspective view, you can see when I'm clicking on that square again, it's going exactly right to the right view. And if I'm going to do a quick render, you can see it's perfectly centered. So now we can animate everything. So first of all, I'm going to select all the cloners and I'm going to Alt G for a group. So we can just animate the group so everything is following. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is set keyframes, of course. So, first of all, I'm going to set a keyframe for the position, set a keyframe for the scaling, and I will set a keyframe for the rotation. And then I'm going to maybe 50 frames, and I'm going to change the... I don't know what kind of rotation that is, but it's just the... Just give it a little bit of an 180% angle and I'm going to right click and add keyframe so now you can see it's just only rotating clockwise or against the clock um, 180 degrees so now we can animate it to 40 frames and I'm going to change a little bit to the settings as well so I'm going to set the first value to 90 um, and the other one to minus 90 and now you can see oops I forgot something I forgot to set the keyframes minus 90 so right click add keyframe add keyframe I'm always making sure to add keyframe for all the values part so <coughs> I'm sure everything is set so when I'm going into my animation, you can see there is something going on, so right here this is what we've got already. So now I can drag my time indicator to 60 frames, just, uh, not a second, excuse me, I'm going to set it to 60 frames and I'm going to change the value again. So what I would like to create is, um, let's, let's take a look, I want to create this kind of an angle. It's kind of hard to do, but I've looked to the settings what I've used in my other project and I'm going to use those values again. So I have um, write it down, it was minus 39.05 and then it was 203.6 and minus 200 and 43. So this is exactly the angle that I would like to use and now I'm just going to right click at the keyframe I will do it for every specific part. So now I got a cool animation so it goes to this angle and I'm going to 80 frames and then I'm going to make sure it's all back to zero. Set it all back to zero at a keyframe. I'm not that great at um, setting keyframes in cinema, I'm just a little bit, I don't know, I'm not that good in animating stuff. I always like to model th things and this is something new for me as well, so I don't even know how to easy ease in cinema 4D, that's something that I also have to learn. Um, the last thing we're going to do is um, mess with the scaling, so that's the last part, so make sure that you've got a keyframe for the scaling at 80 frames. Then just drag the time indicator to the end, to 90 frames. And just set a keyframe again, but first I'm going to make sure the scaling is set to zero for all three values. And I'm going to add a keyframe. So you might have asked the question um, how to get more frames. Most of the time 
the, snap, the standard value is uh, 30 frames, I guess, when you're just opening Cinema 4D. Uh, to change the value, we just go to Edit, Project Settings, and now you can just uh, set the maximum time to, well, on high value or in the project time. And you can also change the frames per second, so if you would like to have a slower animation, you can just set it to maybe 24 frames per second. Don't set it too low, and that will be kind of shocky when you're uh, it, it's kind of um, lagging when you're watching it as a video. So this is our animation that we've got right now and the last thing I'm going to do is set a render. So to render the animation you have to go to the render settings and I would like to give it a motion blur as well but to give uh, a flat design, a factor design motion blur it's something a little bit different than you can do in standard uh, render just set it to physical and here we can click on the physical uh, render option and then we can just well click on motion blur there we, there, that's only the thing you have to do to set a motion blur to the animation and make sure to go to the output and we have to set it to full HD so make sure it's full HD and set it to from 0 frames to 90 frames frame step is 1 and that's basically all we have to look at your output go to your save make sure to select alpha channel so you can well I, I, I think you know what alpha channel means um, set the format to PNG and give it a file path so I'm going to render it at my tutorial uh, folder, I'm just going to create a new and I will call this one the render and I will call this one animation so save so that's basically everything we have to do in our cinema file I'll just zoom out a little bit make sure it's perfectly centered I think this is well, um, well, that's it. Just render in the picture viewer and let's go to Premiere. All right, and welcome back in Premiere. I've just skipped that part so you guys don't have to wait. So, all right, um, let's get to right click import and go to the file where you have saved your project uh, animation render stuff thing. Um, just select the first file, the first PNG file, and make sure you have selected the image sequence. So what it does, it just uh, Premiere directs all the files into one sequence. So I'll show you guys, let's open it. And now I can just drag this sequence into our timeline, and that just creating a video file. So you can play it, there is our very nice animation. So. Alright, the next thing we have to do is render this one out as an alpha in this video. So select the file and go to export, go to media. And just again select the path where you want to save it. Save it as a, uh, I will, I'll call this one a video alpha. Um, save. And I'm making sure I've got the preset. The format is a quick time. And I will set the quick time to set it to non-compression and I'm going to make sure I've got square pixels frame rate make sure it's the same frame rate as your uh, cinema the cinema file I think it's 30 frames we have used make sure the width and the height is set to full HD full HD and render maximum depth 32 bit maximum color that's basically every setting we have to use and let's export and I will see you guys in After Effects alright we are in After Effects I've just rendered a video in Premiere and I'm going to import it, my file into After Effects so let's create a new composition make sure it's full HD 30 frames per second duration I think 5 seconds is enough but set it to 10 seconds and right hit OK and I'm going to create a solid first and I'll give that solid the color that I would like to use as a background and for this time I'm going to use the darkest blue color for my scheme 
and go to After Effects and I will give it exactly the same color. But I've already got the color in After Effects from my last project, so alright. I will call this one background. Back, background. Round. Did OK and there's our background. So now we can import our video. Let's import a file and I will import my video alpha. And I will drag my alpha above my background of course. And as you can see we've got here a very awesome motion graphic animation made within Cinema 4D and just finished in After Effects. So the last thing we can do is export this to a video value and that's great enough to use for YouTube and most of the time I'm going to edit to Adobe Media Encoder but I think you guys already know how to render a video and if you don't just watch one of my videos back again I will set the link in the description where I'm going to explain you how to render your video for YouTube the best way. So. Yep, that's basically it. That was the video about Cinema 4D and After Effects. And I hope I'll, uh, I hope you guys liked the video. If you got any questions, just leave it in the comment section. Um, as you saw, I've just changed the in and outro from my YouTube channel, and I also changed the banner and thumbnail. I just there were uh, a lot of things going on. And I had to change some things. And um, well, let me know what you think about it, and I will see you guys in the next video. So yeah, bye.